What's up everybody, it's DJ Angelo. I'm here at NAM 2016 in sunny Anaheim, California. This is the first of our artist interviews for Reloop and I'm joined by one of our favorite artists, the man himself, DJ Chris Carnes. What's going on everybody? Thank you for the introduction, Angelo. Great to see you, my friend. We're out here, like he said, NAM Convention 2016, showing everybody what the Reloop turntables can do. I think there's some of the best turntables out there right now and I would highly recommend everybody give them a try. Definitely better than the 1200. That thing's a dinosaur at this point. Get that thing out of here. You're obviously a badass DJ, turntablist, you've won world titles. Why DJing? What does DJing mean to you? It's pretty much back in like in 1988 when Yo MTV Raps came on. That was like the first time that I really ever saw or heard scratching guys like Jazzy Jeff, Eric B, Public Enemy and listening to groups like that. Hearing all the cuts in there, like something about it just really attracted me to it. But I never really thought about being a DJ until I moved to Colorado in 1996, where I got introduced to my first DMC battle video, and instantly, the moment I saw it, I knew, I was like, ah, I wanna do that, that's what I'm supposed to be doing, so I haven't been able to stop playing with turntables since then, it's been like almost 20 years now, so I feel really fortunate. It's a blessing to be doing what I'm doing, for sure. You got into DJing through discovering scratching and turntablism, and you were known for many years as a very formidable battle DJ. How has your focus changed over the years? What are you up to today? What's your focus now? I still am focusing very heavy on uh, turntables. I have a lot of things that I want to get better at. Even though like I've had some success in the battle world, that wasn't really like the ultimate goal. I still go back and I watch my old sets, even like my world championship set, and I look at it and think, man, like that, that was terrible. Could have been way better. And so I'm trying to uh, just reach my potential, my full potential at some point. And until there's, I get to that point where there's nothing else that I want to work on or where I hear every sound that in my head and it comes out, the way that it's supposed to every time, then I just can't stop. While I'm here, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, so you know, I'd be kind of like cheating myself if I didn't put everything I had into trying to just continue to try and evolve and improve and get better. Your level is definitely one of the highest in the world, in my opinion, and I would like to know what it's taken for you to reach that level, the World DMC title, physically, mentally, emotionally, and the kind of hours and the workflow you put in. Definitely have put in a lot of hours. I've sacrificed a lot of time. Physically, especially when I was battling, 2011 was the last year that I really competed. I pushed my body really hard that year. Now, there were some, some routines that I was doing that year. There's one in particular that I ended my set with that is known as the faster routine, where it just gets faster and faster and faster. When I first started doing that, I couldn't do it. And then when I got to the point where I could do it, I was like, okay, that really hurts to do, but I'm just gonna keep taking it up a notch and keep taking it up a notch, just kept pushing it. And I actually did end up hurting myself pretty bad. I hurt my shoulder. I knew it was happening at the time, but I figured it'd be worth it if I ended up winning, which it pretty much was, but like now I kind of have to deal with that on a consistent basis. So I actually had to change my style. Instead of doing it like this, I started doing it more with just my hand. I still can't do my chirps quite as fast that way, but it was interesting. Like my stabs got way faster, but it's taken like four years to get to this point where like I, I'm feeling comfortable like this. You know, people don't see that stuff behind the scenes or like know that leading up to that battle, like I couldn't even lift my arm. And I could still bend my elbow so I could do my routine, but like, Physically, I couldn't do it, and I had to take a bunch of painkillers before I went on stage, but I didn't want to tell anybody. I didn't want anyone to think I was making excuses if I were to lose or something, so it really is a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice. You play a lot of different genres. How do you decide what music goes into your crates? Do you have a personal filtration system? What are you looking out for? I try to focus on just looking in really obscure places. I'm always like digging pretty much every day, like listening through tons of music. Like Hype Machine is actually a good one. I don't know if you guys have checked that out. I try not to think about it too much when I'm listening. I'm not like looking for a specific type of sound. It's just if, I, if something hits my ear and I'm like, hey, I like that. I hit the like button and come back to it, download it later and see if I can figure out a way to incorporate it into a set or a routine or mixtape or even just some stuff to listen to. You know, I came from a background, a vinyl background. I worked at a record store for six years. I like done a lot of digging and I still do dig for old music. But I think digging for new music too and making those things work together, like that's how a DJ can really take their style to the next level, expanding their musical knowledge and doing their research. So if you're just getting started out there, I would say definitely make sure that if you're trying to get into a particular type of genre, go back and study the history of that genre and make sure that you know what has been done so you can know what hasn't been done moving forward and be able to be more creative and original. The term real DJing is being used a lot. The need to have a term says a lot about the state of the industry for me. Is the term real DJing a good thing? Is it being misused? Where do you sit? Yeah, the term real DJing, it's, it, you know, I get it. You know, there's a lot of people that come from more of a, a turntable background and like there's a lot of emphasis on performance with that, being able to scratch 
and execute and take somebody else's music and transform it live into something that's your own piece of music. I do love that about that particular side of things. And for me personally, I enjoy all types of music. I enjoy all types of artists and musicians and somebody doesn't have to be on a set of turntables for me to enjoy what they're doing. So if somebody comes out with a controller and they have some amazing ideas and even if they're just playing an amazing set, you know, that's fine with me. And like I understand the whole producer aspect of it where guys are making these hit songs and then they're showing up and people are paying money to go see them just basically press play and, and play their music. It's more like an appearance fee or it's more like an appearance than a performance in some ways. But the consumer has a choice of what they want to support and if people want to support that, who's to say that they shouldn't be able to? To each their own is the way I feel about it. You know, like I don't really juggle as much as I used to. Does that mean I'm not a real DJ anymore? I just like to scratch. I mean, I've done shows with pretty lights where I just use one turntable. So I'm sure there's people out there that look at that. It's like no matter what you do, there's always going to be somebody that's going to say what you're doing is wrong. It's not up to their particular standards. So just can't worry about that stuff. Just do what feels right to you and what comes from inside you. And if that's just pulling out a computer and like being able to go rock a crowd like that, do that. What's one of the strangest experiences you've had DJing? I remember one time when I first, first got started DJing and some friends of mine were like, hey, we want you to come play this set with us. Showed up to this spot and it was like, at a farm and there was just this big open field like a muddy field with like a horse stable i just remember we performed outcast wheels of steel and i was doing the little the scratch thing something in like the tone of the scratching like just made the horses freak out and they were all trying to like break out of their stable and like get away and like run away and stuff so that was definitely like a super crazy moment name one of your favorite guilty pleasure tracks uh man i mean maybe it shouldn't be a guilty pleasure but when hotline bling dropped a song I, I definitely was feeling that i can understand why people were feeling it and it was like one of those songs that would come on and i'd like pull my lady up out of her seat and start start dancing with her so that's one of them for sure what is your favorite real product and why they make a lot of really great products but i definitely i like the rp8000 turntables it's my favorite turntable on the market the fact that it has the higher torque i love being able to like have the key lock off or having real vinyl and being able to do more musical stuff without having all those like and like speed down and slow up things. I love the plus minus 50 digital pitch. Yeah, I perform with uh, Pretty Lights on a semi-consistent basis. And my job is to kind of just to do more musical. Like he wants me to find samples that are gonna be in key with the rest of the songs. The reloop table is perfect for that situation because I can like go up to like the exact pitch where I know, okay, this is like two, this is a whole step up from where the sample originally was. And this song is in C minor. So I have like this whole system set up. Incorporating the reloop table into that is like, it just made everything so much better, man. Okay, Chris, man, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Get to know you a little better. Um, everybody check him out. Chris Carl's music for the social media. Shout out to Reloop. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the interview. More to come from Reloop uh, from the artist interviews in the future. I'm DJ Angelo. Peace.